The very first figurative art that people carved out of woolly mammoth ivory was the head of a lion on the body of a human. So from the very first time we started talking about people, we talked about them with big cats. They've inspired people since the dawn of time. And we know that we all want there to be a world where there is this wildlife out there. What we've got to do is make sure that the presence of wildlife actually has sufficient benefits for the communities where people live. Lion Landscapes is a project that focuses on conserving large carnivores, primarily in Tanzania, Kenya and in Zambia, maintaining big, intact landscapes where both people and wildlife can thrive together. Lions do very well if you give them enough space, you give them enough prey, but the critical element that also needs to come into that is human tolerance for them being there. We found that people lost about 18% of their cash income because of attacks by carnivores on their livestock. We needed to conserve the lion and we needed to protect them with their livestock. And so we've worked with them to reinforce livestock enclosures. People were appreciating the benefits, but it wasn't being linked to a reduction in wildlife killing. We talked about how we could get the presence of wildlife itself that generated the benefits rather than the presence of us as outside researchers and conservationists coming in. So that's how the idea of community camera trapping was born. Uh, this was where the community themselves would manage the camera traps, would be trained in their use. And we came up with a system with a certain number of points. Having a lion walk through your village, cross your camera traps, be recorded, tangibly and importantly then improves the outcome for your village. Lion landscape and the community are working together and we have the same objective and they feel like all oh, these people are really valuing us and they value the animal they are conserving. And at the end of every three months those points would be translated into benefits for the communities. We were still investing in the clinics, still investing in the schools. But this was a significant additional stream of benefits that was coming very directly from the presence of wildlife on their land. Seeing that ownership of wildlife really changed people's views towards conservation. I can see a great change in terms of behaviour of uh, that community in terms of perception to wild animals. I'm going to take you over. 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 So the Ruaha landscape, for example, where I've done most of my work, we've seen the amount of carnivore killing in some of these core villages decrease by about 70%. It's been really important from a conservation point of view. From a community point of view, the number of people who originally reported getting any benefits from the presence of wildlife was only 2%. And in the latest survey, more than half the people surveyed said they felt they have a benefit from wildlife. Really, the perception has moved on greatly. And it's doing a lot of plus in terms of conservation. Uh, I've gained a lot of knowledge about how to promote that coexistence. I can give that knowledge to others too in my country. Well, I have to do it. <laughs> Nobody's going to stand on behalf of me. So I'm as a lion as still alive for the future generation. Oxford can seem so far away, I think, from you know, the savannas of Africa. And yet, this is exactly that kind of project where you can see how important the Oxford knowledge, the Oxford training, the Oxford brand is in terms of having this very global approach towards conservation. So we've taken the best sort of world-class science that we can bring to it, but we've also then addressed some really important conservation problems. 